Hey guys, it's Jeff, and I've gotten a lot of comments to give a review of the final build of iOS 11. I was thinking that since we've done videos on literally every version of the beta, that maybe a video on the top five features of the final build of iOS 11 would be a good video to make. So today, let's take a look at the top five features of iOS 11. Just before we get started, I got a huge, huge response to my last video on the giveaway for the iPhone 8 Plus. So instead of getting the iPhone 8, we were just going to get more versions of the 8 Plus and we'll be giving one more away. So in this video, there will be a question you can answer in the comment section down below to enter into this competition. Of course, like and subscribe as well. There will be more information later on in the video. So for me, one feature, quite possibly the biggest feature that really stands out is the new control center. Now for a while, people have been asking for more and more control over their settings directly from the control center. For me, I too wanted more settings available as well, so the new control center was extremely promising. So let's take a look at all of the options that you can control directly from the control center. First, you should go to the settings app, scroll down to the control center menu, and once you're in that menu, tap the customize controls tab, and you'll get to the place where you can see all of the options for your control center. Now, as you can see, there's an include menu, which shows all of the currently available options in my control center. And then below that menu is a menu that says more controls, which contains all of the options that you can add to your control center. I'll just take you through my own menu and explain which controls do what and go over each one that has force touch menus. So the first one for me is the flashlight. You can tap once to turn on the flashlight and tap once again to turn it off. You can also force touch this option to access the flashlight force touch menu. Here you can select the level of light that you get from the flash on the back of your phone. The next setting I have for you is the low power option. This button does not have a force touch menu, so all you have to do to access the low power mode is just tap the button and the low power mode will be turned on. To turn it off, of course, you just tap it once again. Next up is the timer, which you can tap to access the timer menu in the clock app. But if you wanna save some time, you can actually force touch this option, which will bring up another menu. Here you can swipe up or down on this canister here. The higher you go is I think two hours and the lowest one is just one minute. From this menu, you can actually start, pause, and resume your timer to avoid going back to the clock app. If you do, however, want to cancel the timer completely, you will have to go back to the clock app to do that manually. Next up is the alarm, and there's nothing much here, so no force touch menu, so all you're going to do is just tap the button and that will bring you to the clock app, which allows you to, of course, set your own alarms. Same thing with the next option, which is the stopwatch, so nothing much there as well. The next option I have is the calculator, which I always find to be extremely helpful. By tapping the icon, this gives you direct access to your calculator app, and it does have a force touch menu, which allows you to copy your last calculated result, and you can take that and paste it wherever you need to. This next one is really cool. Of course, this is the camera app, and this has a force touch menu, which allows you to select from multiple options. So when you force touch the camera, this menu opens up, which allows you the option to take a selfie, which will open up the camera app to the front facing camera. You can select to record video, which will open up the camera app to the video recording feature already on. Slow motion is the same, and so is the portrait button as well. For those of you who take a lot of selfies or need quick access to their camera, this is a fantastic option to have in your control center, so I definitely recommend this button being there. Now the next thing I have in my control center is the screen recording feature. Already I have put this to good use by recording my screen and giving tutorials to family members on how to do some things, so it's really come in handy. All you have to do is tap the button which will start the countdown timer to record your screen. To let you know that the recording is in progress, your status bar will turn red. Just tap on the status bar to end the recording or you can go back to the control center and tap on the recording button once more to end that recording. 
This button does have a force touch menu as well, which allows you to start and stop recordings, but also allows you to select whether or not your microphone will be muted or not. Moving on to the next setting, and this one is my notes. This does in fact have a force touch menu, which allows you to create a new note, create a new checklist, take a new photo for your notes, and start a sketch all straight from the control center. Of course, if you just tap on the notes icon, that will take you directly to the notes app. The last option I have in my menu is the do not disturb while driving feature. To access this feature, all you need to do is just tap on the button and it will turn on or off the driving feature that Apple has made. This is actually really, really useful. And while not driving specifically, I can use it just while in a meeting. And it's just nice to have because it'll take all of the notifications, kind of quiet them out, and then I can get back to them when I'm out of that meeting. So those are all the options that I've selected. But if I go back to the customization options for the control center, you can see that there are even more options that you can put down in the control center. There's accessibility shortcuts, access to the Apple TV remote, guided access control, the Apple home app, magnifier controls, the ability to change your text size, access to the voice menus app, and finally the Apple wallet app. All of these settings are extremely useful, but I don't have room for all of them, so I didn't add all of them to my own control center. If you would like a full in-depth review on each control center option, let me know in the comment section down below. Before we get to the next feature of iOS 11, I do have to show you one more thing on the control center. This top portion is of course in a fixed position, so you can't move these controls around. There are, however, a lot of options here. So this menu here gives you access to turn on and off airplane mode, Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, and cellular access. You can force touch the menu and that will give you access to two more things, which will be airdrop and the personal hotspot feature. The next menu over on the right is the music access menu, which of course allows you to control your music. You can fast forward, rewind, pause or play, and of course control your volume slider as well. On the top right, you can select to play music to external devices if you have any connected to your phone. Below that, you have your screen brightness and volume control settings. You can change these by sliding each bar here, but both of them also have force touch menus as well, which will give you a few more options. For screen brightness, you have control over the night shift option, and you can see that you have a more detailed brightness menu. When you slide up and down, the light here at the top does animate, so that's a very cool feature as well. For the volume control on the other side, you can slide up and down, and that icon does animate as well. The really cool thing about the volume control is that the slider doesn't move as fast, so you won't have that rapid change in volume, which can of course hurt your ears. If you live in Europe, you will most likely have a different looking menu, which will display an orange bar at the top, which will alert you when you get to too high of a volume. On the left of the brightness and volume menus, you have the do not disturb button, which is pretty self-explanatory and also the orientation lock. Both buttons animate, which is really cool, but they definitely let you know when the setting is selected or not. The last permanent option here is the screen mirroring feature, and I personally never use this. But if you want to, you can tap on this option, which will allow a display to pop up with all of your mirroring options. Okay, so that was the control center. I know that was long, but since it's just an expansive feature, it definitely takes longer to cover. I promise to get through the rest of the features fairly quickly, so let me move on to the next one. But before we move on, here's that question I was going to ask you all to comment down below. I want to know what your favorite feature of the iPhone X or X is and why. Let me know in the comment section down below, like this video, and subscribe because this video will be the second iPhone 8 Plus giveaway. Also, this video does have to get to 2000 likes as well, so make sure that happens. Okay, let's get back into it. The next feature that I personally love is the new design of the App Store. If you go throughout the entire App Store, you can see that the design has improved a lot from the older design in iOS 10. 
There's a lot more of a modern feel to all of the different menus, and this Today menu allows for more apps to be featured on the front page if a developer's app is new or is doing particularly well in the App Store. There's also an entire games page which will give you an in-depth view into the latest and greatest games that are on the App Store. There's also featured new games and then of course the top paid and free games that are currently on the App Store. The apps menu basically gives you a rundown of the top apps in each category and if you scroll down you can see the top categories of apps and if you click on the see all you can go down throughout the entire list of categories that you would see in iOS 10. The updates menu looks very similar, just a bit more modern, but you can also swipe down to get any recent updates which I think is a great feature to have. All of the information about the app updates are compressed to save a little bit of space on the page here, but if you want to see more about the updates that the app developers made to the app, you can tap on the more option. The search menu is the same as in iOS 10 and still shows the trending apps that users are consistently searching for. Okay, so that was the new App Store. Obviously things have changed quite a bit and you can sort of get lost going throughout everything, but to me it looks extremely nice and I hope that you all enjoy it too. You can also see that there's a new app icon which I personally like, but it's up to you on if that's a good choice or not. Make sure to let me know in the comment section down below on how you like the App Store and if you think it's an improvement on the old one or not. Now, the next feature is the new wallpapers for iOS 11. I mean, I really don't always think that wallpapers are necessarily a highlight of an OS, but they really do show you how an OS has progressed and where it's been. So to access the new wallpapers, head to the settings app and tap on the wallpaper menu. If you head over to the new stills, you'll see that there's a ton of new wallpapers. Towards the top, there's more modern and colorful options, which I'll have to admit look really, really nice. But if you head towards the bottom, you'll see a more retro theme, which I think I'll be using very soon. Personally, I love all of these and I can't wait to give them a try. Let me know in the comment section down below which one is your favorite or which one you want to try. Okay, now on to number four, and this is the Files app. There's not too much going on, but before I go over the app, I just wanna tell you that the macOS server option on the browse menu is still not working. More than likely, this feature won't work until the official release of macOS High Sierra, so stay tuned for a full explanation as to how that feature works when it does. So in the Files app, you can collect all of your documents and files in one place. You can access your iCloud Drive and even your Google Drive, and if you want to, you can even tag your documents to organize them even more. The Recents page allows you access to documents you've recently been working on, and you can access them through force touching the Files app, where they will all display directly on your home screen. So that was the Files app. As I said, not too much there, but it's a great addition, and I think it's really, really helpful for organizational purposes, and it can really help you control your workflow and get organized all from your iPhone, which I think is really, really awesome. The last feature is definitely one that I had a hard choice deciding on. I chose to go with the changes to Siri. When you take Siri from iOS 10 and put her up against the Siri in iOS 11, you get a huge difference of answers, speeds, and overall performance. The answers and responses that you receive from Siri come faster and the information that you receive is a lot more accurate. Siri also has better voice recognition and overall can understand more languages and accents, which is of course really useful. Siri's voice has also changed, which makes the assistant sound a bit more lifelike, so that's nice to hear as the old Siri didn't have that lifelike voice that this new one has. I'll be putting out a video on the difference of Siri from iOS 10 to 11, so stay tuned for a video on that. If you want to see that video, let me know in the comment section down below. If you currently have iOS 11, let me know what your experience has been and also what you like most from the new Siri. So guys, those are the top five features that I personally like in iOS 11. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite feature is because I'd really love to know what you guys think. 
If you missed the giveaway announcement and instructions, make sure to watch the entire video for that and you'll definitely find out how you can win the second iPhone 8 Plus that we are giving away. So thank you all for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button, share with your friends who might be interested, and subscribe for some more upcoming content. Stay tuned and I'll catch you all in the next one.